How's it going, Ventured Youth? It's been a little bit. It's been a few weeks since I've seen you guys or got a chance to talk to you guys. And uh, definitely been hard sitting, there, you know, sitting down, writing a lesson and kind of with some ideas for it. And I've been praying about it, actually, for the last couple of weeks. I know John's been talking to me about this. And so hopefully, you know, this stuff hits you hard. So the last couple of weeks we've been talking about, like, our relationship with God and ourselves and how important it is. And how great it is when we spend time with God and ourselves and how it makes ourselves understand him more, understand ourselves more. Well, this week we're going to be talking about our relationships with other people. Let's pray real quick. God, thank you for this day that we get to spend with each other, that we can still come here, make videos uh, to have fellowship with each other, and that we can just still just love on you and love on people. Actually, to keep us safe during this crisis, help us to uh, just keep moving forward, stay diligent, and uh, stay safe. In my name I pray, amen. So in this uh, time of self-distancing, we have kind of stayed away from people, from communicating. We stepped away from churches, from just hanging out with people, from everyday events. We forget the importance of what fellowship is and what friendship, how important friendship really is. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, Let us think of, of ways to motivate one another and acts of love and a good work. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the time of his return is drawing near. If you look at this passage with the Greek, you get this word that's uh, pretty hard to pronounce, uh, koinoida, which is the Greek word used for this passage for fellowship. It means communion, fellowship, joint participation, the share in which one has in anything, a giftly joint uh, contribution, a collection, a contribution, and being one. See, we have this idea of fellowship as simply just going to church. We see it as just hanging out with friends and talking about superficial things or events. When in fact... We see what fellowship really is, is about supporting people with their physical, mental, and spiritual needs, especially our friends and the people that we're closest with. See, we know that in our, in our life, when it comes to our relationships, we have our friends and then we also have our boys. It's being about the, around your best friends, building them up and, and contributing to them and vice versa, them building you up. This time that we're separated, that we're away from each other, let's look at our friendships and what they have. Some friendships are better off dead than survived because they influence us in the wrong way. There are friends who destroy each other, but real friends stick around closer than brothers. That's Proverbs 18.24. For one more time for the culture. There are friends who destroy each other, but there are friends who stick around closer than a brother. My favorite part about that passage is the quotation marks around friend. A lot of times we surround ourselves with these people that we call our friends, but in the reality, they trash us. They lead us to do stupid things. People that would abandon us right at the you know first sign of trouble. So we need to find those real friends that stick around there closer than a brother to us. A while ago, our lovely intern Josh gave me a verse, Ephesians 3, 5. There are times to scatter stones and there's times to gather stone. God showed me something pretty cool about this verse. See, in our lives, uh, it's almost like uh, when you're playing Minecraft. I know. Oh, he's talking about Minecraft. Shut up, nerds. I know all you guys play Minecraft. All of you. Sorry, John. I think a better just popped out. But when we were playing Minecraft, right, when you want to build a house, you sit there and you get a, a whole area and you fly it out, right? You, you mold it to what you want. You sit there, you take away all the trees, the stones, the dirt, everything like that. And then you come through and you use some of that, you use that same material, right, the logs, the, you turn a stone into cobblestone or back into like a brick stone. And you sit there and you rebuild the place, you rebuild your house. And a lot of times in our life, what we need to do is we need to get rid of the people that are bad in our lives, all the toxic people, all the people that are like dirt and cobble that could just be thrown away. 
And we need to focus on our godly, on our relationships that are healthy for our friendship, friendship and make us a better Christian. In my life, I did this with my high school friends. I sat there and I had to toss away uh, a lot of people I used to hang out with just because they were trash. They would have me do, st- actually, I would feel like uh, I would do stupid things around them. Always like trying to top each other, and, you know, who could do the dumbest things. I know a few of you guys told me that you guys do that with your friends. I relate. And so I ditched these guys. And then I have these new friends I've been hanging out with the last couple years. And I got my church friends I've been hanging out with lately. These include, you know, Thomas, Josh, Damian, Connor, Stewart, John. And then I got some friends at work, Kyle. These people that build me up as Christians, that don't make me do stupid stuff, that make me a better Christian. And they're always trying to put, they're always trying to build me up. See, a few months ago, I had a panic attack. Uh, it was the first panic attack I've ever had. All the stress was just building in me, and I just didn't know how to let it go. But there, I had Thomas and Josh always by my side. They're like, hey, let's go out to dinner. Hey, let's go to the movie. To me, being an introvert, that sounds horrible. But once eventually you go, you love it. And I had these guys that sat there and would constantly check up on me. Every Thursday, we'd meet up, and when we weren't working, we sat there and we were talking about God, about building each other up physically, mentally, and spiritually. That's what it means to have a godly relationship, about true fellowship, is being there when everyone else has left, being there when the person that you're trying to help, or being there for your friend who's drowning, that you can help them pull them up. As once said in a famous movie, Apes are strong together. Apes together strong! So someone that pulls you up when you're drowning, not the people who are drowning you. See, Jesus spent his last few nights and few hours before the cross with two things, with God and his disciples. That's the importance of fellowship. It's about the importance of spending time, taking your time and truly understanding being one with the people. Jesus sat there and loved on his disciples, even though he knew that they would run away or they were the ones that betrayed him. He still sat there and gave enough time to mentor them and build them up still, even up to his last hours. And in this hard times that we see, don't leave your fellow, don't leave the people, don't leave uh, the fellowship, don't abandon it, like Hebrews 10:35 said. I'm not saying break social distancing and go out because that's stupid. But we do have texts, we can call people, we can Skype, Discord, FaceTime. Never go through trouble alone. You have parents, you have me, Josh, Thomas, Stuart, Hannah, John, Chance, Ashley. You have all these leaders that are willing to be there and help you. And I want you guys to find some friends. Find those friends that build you up and actually show you who the better person is in you. Not the people that reflect the horrible and horribleness in you. So before we break off into small groups, I want to give you guys this one question. Identify the people that you're closest to. Are they making you do stupid things or act stupid or making it harder to be a Christian? And if so, why are you still hanging out with them? Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us be blessed and protected. I ask you that you would uh, just bless these small groups, help us to uh, just be open with each other and help us to see uh, the people that we surround ourselves with. Pray, pray, amen.